Hey everyone, it's Alex Martin with Sidewalk Science Center here in Bradenton, Sarasota, and St. Petersburg, Florida. Before I created Sidewalk Science Center, when I was living up in Savannah, Georgia, I started a YouTube channel, this YouTube channel that I have transitioned over to what it is now. And what I was doing was stopping people on the sidewalk and interviewing them about different scientific concepts. One of the videos that I made was all about the moon and how we created our calendar from the moon. And at the end of that video, we explored the concept of a blue moon. By the popular definition, a blue moon is when there are two full moons in a single month. There's two ways that this can happen. If a full moon occurs on the first or second day of any given month, then the next full moon will occur on the 30th or 31st of that same month. And of course, that also depends on the time of day that the full moon happened prior to that. As we discussed in a previous video, leaves out the month of February. Because even with 29 days on the leap year, February just does not have the number of hours required to have two full moons. No matter what time of day, the first full moon occurs on the 1st of February. So like we said, the popular definition is that there are two full moons in a single month. But what are months? Why do we have 12 months in a year? And why aren't they all the same length? Go check out this video right here that I am tagging up on the top because I link to the video I mentioned at the beginning of this one where I fully explain everything to do with the moon and why we have the calendar that we do. Overall, months are mostly arbitrary. With the exception of the moon's orbit around the Earth, there's really no reason why we have 12. We've also discussed that the moon's orbit, depending on how you measure it, is either about 27 and a half or 29.3 days long here on Earth, and there's just really no neat system for fitting the orbit of the moon into the calendar year that we use here on Earth. Even the Earth's year that we know, the 365.25 days on Earth is technically incorrect. It's really 365.2425 days and then that means that every century we have to even skip a leap year because it doesn't add up correctly over the long term and so the 365 and a quarter falls apart if you keep using that with no other adjustments. You can see that the math and the geometry and everything we have for our calendar just it, it doesn't work perfectly and we have to accept that eventually our grandkids are going to be skipping leap years in weird spots, like the year 2100 won't have a leap year. Even though it's divisible by 4, and it's divisible by 100, it is not divisible by 400, and so it skips the leap year. This is a whole fascinating concept too, you should check out this video right here that I also made about 5 years ago because it talks about why we have a calendar that skips leap years. But I'm losing my point. I am here to talk about the blue moon and why I don't like the popular definition, and as I've just said, months are messy, we don't have a neat fitting year, and so I disagree with the concept of a blue moon being the definition that there are two full moons in the month because months are arbitrary. So what's the definition that I like? I like the scientific geometrical definition. This is when there are four full moons in a single season, so the start of winter to the start of spring or the start of spring to the start of summer, or the start of summer to the start of fall, or the start of fall to the start of winter. If there are four full moons inside of those, then the third one is the one that's called the blue moon. And this is the definition that I like much more than the popular definition. You see, we have seasons because the Earth is going around the sun and it's rotating and the axis is tilted, and so everything is changing all the time. But there are four distinct points throughout the year during Earth's orbit, that geometry is beautiful. Point one would be the spring equinox, typically centered around March 20th. Point two would be around June 21st for summer. Point three would be around September 20th for fall. And point four would be around December 21st for, de for December, for winter. Yes, that. Why are these geometrical points? Well, it's because with the changing of the seasons, the Earth's axis is tilted a certain direction, and that direction is either perpendicular to or parallel to the motion of the Earth. And that's the beauty of it. These four distinct points represent the motion of the Earth lining up or lining against the tilt of the axis. So, if a full moon occurs within three days of the new season, of an equinox or a solstice, then by the end of the season, 
there will have been four full moons. It can't happen on the fourth day after the season starts. It's impossible. You can do the math all, all you want, but you would have to speed the moon up and we don't want wonky stuff happening. So a full moon occurring on the first, second, or third day after the changing of an equinox or solstice leaves just enough room for there to be another full moon right before the next equinox or solstice. What we would call the blue moon is the third full moon in that full moon series. Of course, there being four full moons in a season doesn't mean much. It's just a way that we can, you know, have a nice little cool scientific conversation. But if we're gonna be talking about blue moons, we need to distinguish that there is a popular definition and there is a scientific or geometric definition. And the geometric definition is the one that actually has some relevance behind it if we're gonna go with there being four full moons between two points of the Earth's orbit. So I've made my argument. You can say what you would like, but I prefer the geometric definition. Months are irrelevant, and I'm gonna stick to that. Yeah, yeah, uh, oh. Brett was, Brett was due when? All right, everybody, I've made my case. If you have anything that you want to say or add to this conversation, you can leave a comment below. And of course, we will see you in the next video. Keep an eye out for that blue moon coming here at the end of August. You know, it's gonna be talked about in the news and you'll see it everywhere anyway. So keep sharing those scientific curiosities you have and we will see you for the next time. If you have any questions, you can always visit us. Follow us on Facebook, you can find us on Instagram and come to Bayfront Park, the Brainton Riverwalk uh, up in St. Pete at North Straub Park or come to an event that we're hosting with another organization. Ask your questions and always stay curious. I've been Alex Martin from Sidewalk Science Center and we'll see you on the sidewalk.